What up, what up? Crypto Pio here. Welcome to Escape Velocity. This is an NFT freestyle. I'm going to talk about three drops that have come out in the past week that are pretty interesting on Nifty Gateway and I think could potentially have long term uh, price appreciation. A couple of them have already had pretty robust price appreciation. So let's take a look. So this one just dropped yesterday. This is called uh, Kill the Wabbit, this piece by Jonathan Thunder, a Native American artist. So if I take a look at this one, the original drop was 999 bucks. The floor at this point is 25.49 and it's been less than 24 hours. So from an alpha perspective, you're talking about a 2.5x return in less than a day. That's pretty wild. That doesn't come along too often uh, in the NFT world for sure. Um, if we look here, let's just take a look at the price history excuse me, the sale history. Okay, so two hours ago, someone paper handed it for 1700 bucks. Um, that's hilarious. $2,500 floor, someone sold it for 1700 bucks. That's basically that person like screaming out that they're totally desperate for 1700 bucks. They couldn't wait for someone to buy it for 1900, 2000, 2200. There was a $2,500 floor. So I do think that that's hilarious. Um, someone else, Three hours ago, you know, 2000 bucks. So it's like these people are just trying to offload this thing. If you look, we have a sale at 2700, 2500, 2450. Here's another 2750 here. And not to mention this person, rare art collector, it looks like is really scooping them up. Yep really scooping him up he's bought seven in the past 24 hours probably bought a few at drop let's take a look at how many he has okay yeah so he's got eight he bought probably one at drop and, and six after the fact this guy's also got 137 or this person i should say has 137 pieces including a hack -a tower right here that's wild three boss logics right here some dot pigeons, the good dot pigeons, um, or the really good dot pigeons, I should say. What else? Yeah. So, okay, some Kenny Schachters, another Hackatow, Mad Dog Jones, Boss Logic, Hackatow, Jose Delbo, Hackat. Wow. All right. Well, this person's NFT collection right here is literally worth like well over a half a million dollars. Here's a Mad Dog Jones Lotus Train. This right here is worth like 30000 35000 Same deal with the Dead Ramens. Oh my goodness. Wow. All right. So yeah, this person's an animal and they decided that they really like the Kill the Wabbit piece. And when a whale, a big time collector that has an NFT collection that's worth between five hundred grand and $1.5 million decides that they really like a piece, it does bring the piece a lot of value. A lot of people just try to flip these things like immediately. Like a lot of people look at the whole nifty gateway and NFT thing as like a short term craze and an opportunity for them to buy something for a thousand bucks and literally sell it for like 1400 bucks or something like that. You know, make 400 bucks minus some fees. So maybe like 333 bucks, which, you know, obviously a real collector doesn't look at it that way. Um, but some people do. So if I look at the let one thing that we can look at is the first secondary sale. When we look at the first secondary sale, we can see how, you know, uh, impact or just how like strong the performance is going to be. Okay, so check it out. So someone bought this for a thousand bucks and they sold it immediately for twelve hundred bucks. So this person literally wanted to make like a hundred and twenty dollars off of the piece and they succeeded. They made like a hundred and twenty bucks after fees or whatever uh, on the piece. So someone got, a, got it for a steal at 1200 not nah, someone did it for 1300 same exact deal okay so we have a couple of paper hands that got shaken out right there another 1200 okay by the way this person jerumi looks like he bought several so let's just take a quick look at him because i wouldn't be okay so he bought two he also has a wisby which we're going to talk about in this he also has the the kanye egg uh, the hundred grand by balte which we're also going to talk about in this we're not going to talk about this in this one, but he has VMV by Fawocious, which is what I think is my greatest miss. I'm happy to see that he has several slime swings because I own that. He's got a Bitcoin angel. Okay, cool. So very quickly, we jump from 1200 to a 1400 
to 1500 1500 1500 1500 and, and rare art collector coming through just buying up all the 1500s so when there's something like this essentially the performance of a drop has to do with a few things and these things are evolving everybody's sort of learning at the same time with nifty gateway but let's take a look at this okay 97 primary sales so that's very low to give you an idea, the Bitcoin Angel, for example, had 4,200 primary sales. The Faces piece by uh, Slime Sunday and Blau had over 5,000 primary sales. So the primary sale does have a lot to do with it because it determines the liquidity in the market for a given piece. So there were 97 primary market sales and only 22 secondary market sales so far. And as we looked at, this this person rare art collector is coming through and buying up you know six seven eight of them and now as long as most people out of those 97 hold because someone like rare art collector who bought seven or eight of them he's holding them he's not going to sell them that's not like the point he's buying them to hold them to collect them to to see how they appreciate long term maybe he sells one eventually maybe he just never sells them i mean i'm planning on never selling any of my nfts so i wouldn't be surprised if a whale like that has the same approach what happens then is there aren't that many kill the wabbits to sell so you know automatically there aren't as many paper hands that will sell it for a low price so now the floor is 2544 if you want to kill the wabbit the floor is going to be 2544 to get one let's see what the highest global offer is right now 2000 so that's pretty high right it's not 1200 it's 2000 and that means that someone has an offer out there they're just like i'll give you 2000 for your kill the wabbit and none of the holders of kill the wabbit are game to pay that they're just like no 2000 is not enough so this piece i think could potentially be really interesting long term i think that the fact that there's less than 100 primary sales and you know if this artist continues to kind of gain some notoriety on or not notoriety but just attention on nifty gateway if he does another drop that performs well people will look back at this drop and they'll say oh wow there's only 97 kill the wabbits out there that person rare art collector scooped up essentially 10 percent of them like 10 percent of the whole market when we were looking in the global history right there we saw some other people that had more than one so you know think of it as like 25 percent of the market at least is being controlled by collectors that have multiple copies of the piece it's going to be really hard to get on your, your to get your hands on a piece like this for a lower price so this is definitely something to watch i think this artist is is someone to watch um because i think this is a really cool piece obviously it features bugs bunny pop culture um and uh, pop, pop culture icon bugs bunny and just the fact that you know it's it's pretty uh it's like a social commentary in a lot of ways and jonathan thunder a native american artist a lot of his art has to do with you know kind of pointing out the history of indigenous people in this country in north america um and i think that there's a lot to be said about this piece when you kind of look at it from that from that point of view so moving on this other piece honey bear goes to white castle in in this drop for 1200 uh performing okay like eighteen hundred dollar floor right now not as electric as kill the wabbit so we'll move on to all right so this is a drop by balte this came out last thursday so four days ago four calendar days ago absolute rocket ship across the board immediately probably the the biggest rocket ship that i've seen drop wise since i started paying attention to nifty gateway um all of these pieces all six of them were a thousand bucks to buy a drop and if you had bought all six of them for a thousand bucks you would be smiling ear to ear right now let's look at the floors gusher 2488 floor pez $1,900 floor. Taffy, $4,000 floor. 100 grand, the one we're going to talk the most about. $3,000 floor. Laffy, $4,300 floor. Dum Dum, $1,900 floor. So all of them have almost doubled or you know perform much better than doubling um incredibly impressive performance for a drop all the pieces are wild really cool balte is a brooklyn based 3d artist um this stuff is really cool because if you take a look right here at dum dum the way that the figures move is really like disturbing it's really disturbing 
like viscerally when you look at these pieces. And I think that that says a lot, you know, about an artist. Here's Laffy, the head's going to get ripped open. It's just really wild, the sort of, um, the feeling that the piece communicates as... <laughs> As Balte gives it to you, I don't even want to talk too much about the art because it really does speak for itself. I mean, this is Kanye as Humpty Dumpty sitting on the Berlin Wall. When he gets cracked open, gold comes out of his his head. So there's a lot going on there. There's a little Adidas logo on his forehead too. Um, so you can kind of you know read into that however you want. And all of them are named after retro candies. Gusher, Pez, Taffy, 100 Grand, Laffy, Dum Dum. So these are all like vintage candies. I really like Pez. It's it's just so disturbing. The way the head moves is just wild to me. I think the colors on all these pieces are incredible. On Discord, um, someone was pointing out that pink, like pink hues, have been performing really, really well on Nifty Gateway. There's pink in every single one of these pieces. So that's something to think about. I think the light blue and the pink on this one with the gold tongue coming out is so cool. I think it's just like really advanced use of color. But again, I don't want to talk about the pieces too much. Let's look at the price action. So 100 grand. This is the most liquid in the drop. Uh, we had the highest number of mints here. It's another drop that had low mints, even though it was open editions. Most of them have under 100 mints. This one had 287, by far the most. And as a result, you know, there's been a ton of primary market sales. In the first 48 hours of this piece being out there, it was an absolute rocket ship. I had the opportunity to buy it at 1200. I watched it, went up to 1400 I watched it, I didn't act. Within hours, it was at 1700 Within hours, it was at 1900 I went to bed, I woke up, the floor was at 2900 So the train just totally left the station. It was wild. Um, and if you look at the global history, right? Once paper hands got shaken out here, and the, by the way, the fact that there's like 300 mints and paper hands got sh uh, shaken out really quick, Let's take a look. There was already one sale mixed in there for like 1300 bucks. So there's always going to be the flippers, right? There's always going to be the people that buy the piece and try to immediately flip it or successfully immediately flip it for really anything that they can get for it. Any sort of alpha, any positive, they're like, I'll take it. I'll do it. I'm, I'm just in this NFT game to get a little bit of profit within you know 30 minutes of me buying a piece or within three hours of me buying a piece. So once those people get shaken out, and sometimes they never get shaken out because sometimes a piece will just crater and people are like i'll do anything to get this off my hands but if those people get shaken out and the true collectors hold the piece that's when you can see some crazy alpha some crazy price appreciation so all right we have someone that flipped it for 1350 he was just dying to get 300 bucks all right just going through what do we got a lot of mints come on oopsies Page 11, 1369, more paper hands. Okay, so here we are. Here it's showtime. So because there was a higher mint count on a popular piece or, you know, a soon-to-be popular piece, what you get is the piece changing hands a lot and the floor slowly creeping up. So a lot of people think it's all about scarcity. It's all about, like, you know, an addition of five or an addition of ten. That's the only way it'll be valuable. You can have a high addition count as long as it's a popular piece. If people really like the piece, if people see long-term upside on the piece, having a higher addition count can actually be really good because then whales will come in and they'll want to buy 20 of the piece they want to have the biggest you know share of that given piece um, or they want to own all the piece and I think long term you're gonna see this with the pieces that end up being iconic when the tr you know the real whale art collectors like from the traditional world the kind of people that buy a Basquiat or buy you know a Jackson Pollock for I don't know how many million they're going to want to have all of the hundred grand by Balte if hundred grand by Balte becomes one of those pieces one of those true blue chip nfts that has long-term staying power the same way that a Picasso painting does, right? And don't get it twisted. There will be those NFTs. I'm not saying a hundred grand is going to be that one, but of course there's going to be those NFTs just like there are those physical paintings. There are those physical sculptures, those artists in the traditional art world, just like there are those trading cards that someone will pay over a million dollars for. We don't know what will emerge you know, as those pieces, but they will emerge. So that's the whole kind of exciting thing about NFTs, the whole gamble. Um, the reason why people are actually selling Bitcoin 
and other incredibly valuable assets uh, b because they feel like putting that money into NFTs could potentially have more upside. And I think it makes sense when you see the performance of this piece, like this piece tripled since Thursday. You know, I love Bitcoin. I have a ton of Bitcoin, but Bitcoin didn't triple since Thursday. So that's kind of like the exciting gamble part of the NFT space. So here we go. We're going to dive in. We're just seeing, you know, just basically textbook, you know, watching the floor rise. 1300, 1350. One sells for 2200 low mint, number seven out of 287. The low mints are always going to sell for considerably more. So that person, by the way, getting that number seven for 2200 is like the best pickup he could have possibly done. He bet on the piece. He wanted a low mint. He thought the piece was going to do well, got it for 2200 Now the floor for the piece period is 3000 He can probably sell that number seven mint for like four grand, 4500 right now. Not that he's going to, or I'm assuming that person is not going to. Um... This is hilarious. So people are just offloading it, like just trying to get rid of it. 1100, 1000, 1270, 1245, 1250. They don't see it. They don't understand that this piece is a rocket ship and they're like, ah, oh, I just need to get it out of my hands. Paper hands. Um, keeping it going. You're seeing people buy multiple. Oh, my NFT. He's an avid collector. He bought multiple. He's buying it at 1471 at 1500. So oh, people are speculating that this is the real Kanye. Yay, at Kanye. He bought one, two, three, four of them. I think if it was the real Kanye, he would just still be buying them because the real Kanye is like incredibly rich. I don't know. If I was the real Kanye, I would just come through and buy all of them that you can buy because it's really not that big of a deal. Like this guy or this, you know, Kanye, number one Kanye egg, he only bought four. I don't buy it. I don't think it's the real Kanye. Uh, so... 2000 1900 and that also by the way that the, the purchases by yay right there could have been the reason why the bull run on this piece went off the way it did i mean that combined with balte all of balte's previous pieces from previous drops are just rocket ships it's crazy so let's take a look all of a sudden the floor is north of 2000 that's you know pretty damn good for 24 hours on the market 36 hours on the market we have collectors buying multiple always a good sign and uh yeah i mean look before you know it it was at 3000 it got up here to 3400 3333 kind of cooled off a little bit got back in the 2000s and you see this you see the sort of cycles in the market or, or just like the price discovery kind of going up and down so this piece was super hot on saturday and then you know Pieces like Kill the Wabbit dropping on Sunday might have diverted some attention from this piece. So people were able to sneak in and get it for 2500 which is a steal, it seems. You never know. The piece could crater. But if this becomes a piece that costs 7000 8000 9000 10000 to own, then 2500 is a pretty good number. Um, so yeah, so let's just take one more look at this drop real quick. The other pieces by Balte. Laffy, people were selling this for like 1000 bucks. Like people were literally, they bought this and they sold it for a loss immediately. I don't understand how you don't have like an 18 hour time horizon. Like I get it if you have a short time horizon, but like at least have an 18 hour time horizon. Like just wait three quarters of a day to see what the piece is doing. Like I wouldn't panic and just get rid of Laffy that quickly because now the floor is 4,300 bucks. Did you want to take a $100 loss on Laffy or did you want to literally make like four or a 3,000 bucks of profit on Laffy? Like to me, it's a no brainer. My good friend Jay Coin, who's been in one of the uh, chats with us, bought Dum Dum. We talked about it a little bit in that first NFT freestyle that we put out. Dum Dum had a $2,500 floor on Saturday. It was killing it. Obviously, paper hands have emerged and took some profit, 100% um, profit, which you know you can't be that surprised that they did that. But I wouldn't be surprised if Dum Dum you know pops off again. I'm still looking into the idea of buying something from this drop. I'm not as liquid right now as I want to be. I've mentioned in other videos that I went from $0 to $25,000 in NFTs in like less than 25 calendar days. So I do kind of need to cool it because I'm not paper handing my pieces. I'm not selling my pieces. I won a drawing 
in the Justin Roiland drop, the co-creator of Rick and Morty the other day, and the piece cost 1100 and just immediately paper hands were just a get rid of it, get rid of it. Someone sold it for 450 bucks the other day. I just don't even understand the point. It's by Justin Roil Roiland. Rick and Morty has a long, um, or excuse me, a cult following. So I think if you have a, a long time horizon on those pieces, once the Rick and Morty diehard fans get to the space, I have to imagine that Justin Roiland stuff is going to have value and that might be in 20 years there's a ton of people saying what's the deal with nfts when i could just like save it as a jpeg and all that like they really don't get that digital art is literally exactly the same as physical art or physical collectibles so it takes time for people to come around to that you're seeing everybody adopt bitcoin right now in 2021 bitcoin's been out for a decade for literally like eight or nine years most people were like oh internet money i don't believe in that and then all of a sudden everyone's like oh wait bitcoin's for real so you have no idea how or we have no idea how long of a time horizon you might need to have some of these nfts really make sense um or excuse me just really appreciate so you know balte hats off to you this drop is crazy uh, if I could do it all over again, I would have bought all six at drop for a thousand. Obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty. I hope I can get my hands on some of this stuff in the future. It looks like the trains left the station on a lot of stuff already. All right, so last one. Um, this is Karma Chameleon by Wisby. Another thousand dollar drop. Really high mint count on this. Twelve thirty six. A lot of hype around this. Wisby is a street artist from Brooklyn. He's already super well known outside of the NFT world. Um, th this is also for a good cause. Like, like his pieces have to do with uh, raising awareness around like the extinction of animals on earth. So I hope you can get behind that kind of cause or that theme. Um, and there's, you know, sort of like some extra credit here where there's a set completion element. I think this is one of the coolest parts about the NFT space is that an artist can say, hey, if you collect this piece, this piece, and this piece, then you get this piece for free. We saw that in Justin Roiland's first drop. We saw something really cool with Mad Dog Jones' Crash and Burn drop where if you like sent uh, a number of the pieces to Mad Dog Jones, he burned them, like he destroyed them, and then he sent you a new piece. So I think that's super cool. Um, so let's look at Karma Chameleon's price action. It stalled a little bit at first excuse me and then it exploded so and and then it kind of cooled off again so it's really interesting how these pieces can go on bull runs if you're a trader uh, I think the NFT space is a really interesting space. You'll probably get called paper hands by me or somebody like me if you do do that. But this is why people do get attracted to the NFT space because there are opportunities to make money. So we're looking at a 1750 floor on this. It was selling for north of 2000 in the past 72 hours consistently. Um, so yeah, let's just take a quick peek. I hope I can get past the mints relatively fast. Nifty Gateway definitely needs to do some work on the user interface. Wow, okay, so actually, so like for example, someone bought it for a thousand, got a low mint number 52, just flipped it for 2,000 immediately, so 100% return. And it looks like the early flippers were crushing it on this piece. 1,800, 1,750. These are all low mints, but they basically hit the jackpot with that. Yeah, all low mints just flipping them, flipping them. For 1700 like very, very good profit on the flip. So doing well for, for flippers. This person had mint number 22 and sold it for 1522. He didn't look at the price history. He didn't see that you could have sold it for probably 2100 at that point. Oh my goodness. Number 43 sold it for 1300 Wake up. Wake up. Paper hands. Wake up. 1200 for 50, uh, mint 54 Wake up. My goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my good number 29. This is egregious. We're seeing egregious paper handing on the Wisby that I didn't even know about until now. This is hysterical. These are all low mints. Number 38 for 1200. You need an 18 hour time horizon if you're gonna do this. All you flippers out there, you get a sub 50 mint out of 1200 on a Wisby, and you're like, oh, I just need to get rid of this for 1200 bucks. Minus fees, you probably got 150 bucks of profit. Was it worth it? If someone else sold it for 2,000 bucks with a worse mint than you hours before, you could have just checked the global history. I know I'm getting fired up right now. Don't do that. Don't do that. Come on. Come on. All right. So let's try to get to the regular secondary market here. I don't want to call out any more paper hands because I'm just going to get all worked up. Here's another one sub 100 mint. Just get rid of it, I guess. All right. So. Let's just get to proper secondary market. 
Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Nifty Gateway, do something about this. All right, here we go. Oh, well, spoke too soon. Come on, come on. So we're trying to get here to just the regular secondary market. In other words, the market once all additions were minted and no you know, new additions were being minted. So let's do it. There were 1,200 mints, so that's why it's taking so long. I'm seeing paper hands everywhere selling this for 1,200 bucks. I'm not surprised. I was surprised by the lower mints being sold for that much. All right, my goodness, taking so long. I'm sorry. Okay, we're only, yeah, I need to move this way. This is definitely gonna be the right way to do it. All right, so you're seeing here two days ago it was selling for two grand, north of two grand regularly. Like mint number 448 was selling for north of two grand. Um, and that's consistent. That was two days ago. So now we're seeing the bull run develop here. See this floor going 1600, 1575. So it's sort of had a, a slower buildup. It wasn't as electric as the Balte drop, for example. We went, here we go. So this is it right here. We're seeing the the floor rise. 1188, 1195, 1199. Again, a piece with a high mint count north of 1,000, which you would think, oh, that's so many mints. But if it's a popular piece by an artist that people believe in, like Wisby, then people are going to hold it. So it doesn't matter that there's a higher mint count. In fact, it's probably a good thing because that means the collectors that really believe in the piece can buy a dozen of them. We're going to pay attention. I mean, this here's a person that bought two right here. We'll pay attention and we'll see if anybody, I'm assuming, oh, my NFT, I'm seeing him buy them up. Let's see how many he has. Let's just see. Because this is a whale that has 95 or at least close to a whale that has 95 NFTs, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, nine. So he bought nine of them. And he's probably not the only person that bought nine of them. So at the end of the day, if collectors are going to scoop them all up, sweep the floor, and hoard a bunch of Wisby's uh, Karma Chameleon, there's fewer on the market to buy. And there were a lot, and there's going to be a lot of paper hands. All these people are like, I need to get rid of it for twelve fifty. I need to get rid of it for twelve seventy five. I just need to get rid of it. I need, I need it to go. I need it out of my life. I just bought it three hours ago, but I need it out of my life. And so, you're going to see that floor creep up, just keep creeping up, and then you're going to start to see like you know jumps a little bit. Like these are starting to be jumps. Like this is all happening in the same day. And one day it's going from a twelve hundred dollar floor to a $1,900 floor in one day. That's pretty robust price appreciation for one day. If you bought five of them at $1,200, you're pretty happy when the floor is $2,000. So we just saw it continue to rise, and I know it went north. So here we go. We're starting to see sales consistently north of $2,000. And by the way, while this is happening on Discord, on like the Nifty Gateway Discord, people are just putting gummy bear memes left and right. People are just hyping this up. People are like, Wisby, like just going nuts because they're just getting excited because they're Wisby collectors, and they're watching the bull run in real time. Look at this. It got up to $2,420 in the same day. So people were selling at 1200 bucks, and then within 12, 12 hours, it's selling routinely for double that, including low, I mean, uh, high mints, 820. That's a, not a good mint compared to 50. Are you kidding me? Look at this, 914 for 2000. So at the end of the day, this one kept ripping, and then it, it kind of cooled off a little bit, right? So we had like peaks, and then we're seeing it sort of cool off. And then now, okay, I mean, look, it's still north of 2,000 consistently. Someone sold number 66 for 2222. I wouldn't have done that. Number 77 for 2200. Oh, my goodness. All right, all right. I'm just going to get upset again. All right, so here we go. Someone paper handed this so bad. And this, so I follow this guy on Twitter. This guy's the man. He talks about NFTs a lot on Twitter. And he, I think I, I'd go as far to say that he's a whale, 206. And look at this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> a bunch of Mad Dog Jones, a bunch of ferocious shoes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. A bunch of Victor and Victoria. This guy is killing it. Absolutely kill. Oh my. This is going to make me 
sick because I missed out on this one. I'll make a whole video about how I should have bought this one. I knew to buy this one. I just didn't buy it. And it's been an absolute rocket ship. I do have two of this, so that makes up for it a little bit. He's got five Bitcoin angels. He's heavy on Fuocious, and I'm not surprised. I think Fuocious is going to be a blue chip artist, no question. Like a, a household name, maybe long term. Fuocious is 18 years old. I'll talk more about Fuocious in a later video. Um, I'm loving Maddie's collection here. This is lights out. Dota rings, a ton of boss logic. My goodness. All right, so Maddie's collection right here is worth over a million dollars. 100% it's worth over a million dollars. No, oh, Beeple Bull Run. Look at that. Last stand of the nation state by four times four, and then Beeple politics is bullshit. Last sale, 150 grand. Last sale, 200 grand. There's 350 grand worth of NFTs just sitting in this guy's collection right here. So you get a whale like that, he comes through, he buys up a ton of Wisby, he's not selling it. It's not for sale anymore. Those Wisbys are out of circulation now, right? And so we're seeing paper hands here circle back, getting down to sub 2,000. Don't be surprised if someone sweeps the floor right now looking at it for under 2,000. Let's see what you can buy it for right now. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like around 1750. Well, there it is. I don't know if you can buy this one. You might not be able to because Nifty Gateway. Okay, you can. So you can literally buy it for seventeen fifty. All it takes is one whale to come through and sweep the floor by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen of them, and then you're at a two thousand dollar floor. I can't do that, but don't be surprised if one, two, three people do do that. All right. So we talked about Balte, Jonathan Thunder, Wisby. I'm CryptoPO. This is Escape Velocity. I'm going to keep dropping. Thanks for watching. Peace.